why is the wealthiest continent in the world portrayed as being poor? I talked about this um, several times because if you th understand all the resources that come from Africa, whether it be human resources, whether it be mineral resources, whether it's oil, whether it's rubber, cocoa, bauxite, tanzanite, uranium, uh, you begin to see that this continent does not need the rest of the world. It doesn't need any aid programs, it doesn't need any missionaries, it doesn't need anything because everything is here. When you get below the desert and you see that throughout the year it rains, it has everything, you can grow everything, it's just been abused, whether it be from imperial powers, whether it be from local governmental powers controlled by imperial powers or, or whatever. So the reason why it's portrayed as poor is because that allows for easier exploitation. If someone is portrayed as poor or people are trained and told that they're poor or their indigenous system is altered and now a new system is imposed and within that new system the people are poor, then it makes it, it creates a dependent situation. When the world is really dependent upon Africa, it now is like a reverse psychology to say, no, you're dependent upon us. You need our aid. You need us to come save you. You need us to come rescue you on every level of your existence, from a religious level, from an economic level, from a cultural level. We need to erase everything about you because it's all bad. And now we need to replace it with us, which is supposed to be good and great and all of that. And so when that happens, now people are willing to basically sell their souls to be accepted within this new uh, cultural systems uh, system that's been imposed here. Education system modified. Many of the indigenous uh, educations have been lost because those who come in, the, the imperialist colonizers came in and said, oh, all of what you're doing is bad. It's witchcraft. It's this, that, and the other. So the people said, oh, no, I need to get rid of that. And I now need to follow what you're telling me because that's developed. That's going to be that's the good way to go and what I have is trash. And you just see this mindset over and over. But the truth of the matter is Africa has everything. And when you really get on an indigenous level and watch how ingenious local people are and how they make things happen, you sit back and you shake your head. You're like, wow. And, and, and then when you look at it from an economic standpoint, you realize the abuse that it, the abuse is that occurred. So it's like if you, if you left the people to be themselves, they would survive just fine. But it's when you come in and you now say, okay, we're gonna make up these rules that you have to follow. We're gonna make the land lease. We're gonna make you do this. We're gonna make you put your children in our schools. We're gonna make you take this medicine. We're gonna make you do these different things, which alters the natural flow of the existence of the people. So part of it is marketing. People in America, they don't wanna come because it's marketed as poor. But people in Europe, they know, so they come. They build their dreams, multi-million dollar dreams. I mean, you, I mean, you can just look around and see people living beyond their last li best life. Lives they couldn't live in Europe or America or Canada, Australia or wherever. They couldn't live those lives there, but they can live them in Africa and live them even better. Some of the most beautiful landscapes that you will ever see in your life are right here on this continent. So whether it be in Senegal, whether it be in Tanzania, Kenya, Ethiopia, Egypt, South Africa, wherever, Ghana, Togo, some of the most beautiful landscapes and beaches you'll ever encounter. Some of the beautiful, most beautiful people that you'll ever see. Very diverse, ethnically diverse people. Everybody's thinking Africa looks one way, but I've seen every complexion. I've seen every uh, body type, everything. Tall, short, I mean, you name it. Right here on the continent of Africa. So, again, what we have to do is get the media out of our minds. Uh, Get, the, get the, the chatterboxes out of our minds, the, the people who are saying that we aren't from here out of our minds, all those different things, and see for yourself. And that's the whole point of this. The reason why I go as hard as I do is because I want people to see for themselves. I want them to experience this for themselves. I, I know what it can do for you if you allow it to do it for you by coming and being a part. And not just one country, check out different countries. You'll find the one that you have a preference for in, in, in the whole process. But sometimes as you experience different cultures, you realize how you begin to grow and see things and, and appreciate things that you might not have done in America. America has a very intoxicating way of spoiling us, dumbing us down, making us lazy and making us entitled to our own detriment. Again, it's a lot of reverse psychology here, deceiving us into thinking that we're wealthy when in actuality, when I'm talking about wealthy meaning psychologically wealthy, when in actuality we're really de deprived on so many different levels. And 
and us being in that particular mindset, it keeps us stuck. When we could be eagles soaring or lions roaring, I don't know, that sounded good, we're opting to be pacified, spoiled, entitled brats sitting back complaining about what isn't right, the water too cold, you know, all, what, all the stuff that we can complain about wherever we are, whether it's America or Africa or Europe or wherever. And so that's why I want for people who are part of the African diaspora to have the experience to put themselves in, in through the, the growth that comes with uh, experiencing other cultures. And, and, uh, and, and the other thing is this, there's so many people I talk to, so many African-Americans and African diaspora say, oh, I've been all over the world, I've been to Asia, I've been all, I've tramped all through, traipsed all through Europe. I've been to Australia, I've been to the Alps, I've done this, that, and the third, but I've never been to Africa. Uh, I've never been there, and so... Uh, you owe it to yourself to at least experience it. And, and again, like I said, multiple countries. You, when you see it, it will impact you if you let it. If you let it. And uh, what we create here at Maximum Impact Travel is a culture and a community of people like-minded people who are looking for these experiences not just in one country this is the first experience of a lifetime we take you on your first journey and then we look to take you other places and we bring everybody together and we create that culture and that community and we want you to be a part of it so i'm gonna wrap this up go to maximumimpacttravel.com sign up on the website so you can stay up to date on what we have going on the different trips that are being released we have so many trips coming down the pike that you can be a part of bring your family bring your children we encourage you to do all of that so that's the deal so why is the wealthiest continent in the world for trade is being poor because somebody doesn't want you to know all of the wealth and partake of it so what you're going to do come see for yourself partake and enjoy subscribe like share maximum impact with jay cameron until next time take care be safe open up your eyes and see all the fun and mystery take an african adventure with darren and destiny from the mountains to the shore The Adventures of Darren and Destiny. And Darren and Destiny are twin brother and sister. And you go on their adventures throughout the African diaspora, meaning so African diaspora destinations, primarily focused in Africa, but we go to South America, we're gonna to go to the Caribbean. Their first book is going to take you to Ghana. And then we're gonna go on a safari. And from there, we're gonna to go to Ethiopia. And then we go to Salvador, Brazil. And what the goal is, is to be able to inspire curiosity in the continent of Africa, in our children from a very young age, and to really tell a more accurate story. Most of our children are exposed to negative images, late night infomercials about how bad things are, everybody's sick, everybody's poor, everyone's uneducated, but that's simply not true. So what Darren and Destiny and their family do is they go to different African destinations. They are learning about these different places. You're beginning to see positive images, but still telling the truth. I mean, that's the important thing, to tell the truth about some of the things that have occurred. But it's all done on a children's level so they begin to understand it. And it begins to pique their curiosity. They begin to learn more. And hopefully one day they will want to explore and visit the continent of Africa and its many countries. There's just so much that Darren and Destiny are able to do and as they're doing it, it's, it's like they begin to open the minds of a, a new generation and they don't get bombarded and indoctrinated with negativity. They're actually able to see positivity and inspiring images and messages about the African diaspora as well as those who are still indigenous to the continent of Africa, and they begin to learn more and, uh, and just see things differently. So I'm excited about introducing the adventures of Darren and Destiny.